Hey, what's up, guys? It's XX Modern Warfare here, Gamer Tab Vandra Chicken, and welcome to Hardware Tutorials Episode 5. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to flash a Lighteon DG16D2S drive. And this is one of the most common drives that you can get for the fat consoles. Um, unfortunately, it's uh, slightly harder to flash than the BenQ drive, it involves uh, an extra tool and extra steps um, for extracting the DVD key and flashing the firmware. So, why do you want to flash your drive again? Basically because it lets you play uh, backup copies of your games and you can play modded ISO discs, uh, modded copies of your games without having to hotswap. So it's um, a great advantage and it's really the best time to do it because there's the Silver Bullet firmware LT Plus 3.0 which is undetectable and it's been undetectable since 2011 so it's very unlikely Microsoft are ever going to be able to detect it. So if you haven't got your drive flashed already, now is definitely the time to do it. Just quit wasting time and flash your DVD drive. So, basically, again we're going to be using the CK3i and the USB Pro. Now, um, if you haven't watched my BenQ tutorial, then the USB Pro is not necessarily needed. It depends on the SATA ports in your computer. If you do not have the correct SATA ports in your computer, then you'll have to buy an X360 USB Pro. It's basically a USB to SATA adapter. It's got the correct SATA port, obviously, for flashing um, on the device. And you may already have the correct uh, SATA chipset in your computer anyway, so you may not need this. Um, so try every single SATA port in your computer, and if none of them work, then buy the X360 USB Pro. So as well as th those two, something we did not need for the BenQ, but we do need for the DG16D2S is a Probe 3, which includes this uh, power cable and the tiny little USB Probe 3 itself. So there it is guys, Team Executor Probe 3, and this is what we're going to be using for extracting the DVD key. Uh, so a little extra thing you'll have to buy, it's quite cheap I think. Uh, you can get it in a bundle with the CK3i and USB Pro as well. So um, I might link you guys to that in the description. So um, basically to tell that your drive is a DG16D2S, now I don't have the sticker on here because uh, i got a window mod and I think the sticker kind of ruins it. I like seeing the magnet spinning up uh, through the window mod so I took the sticker off. But this sticker should be attached to the drive like that. And if you look on the sticker, so top left here guys you can see it says DG-16D2S Now the dash 09C may not be on all of them Sometimes it will just be D2S without the dash 09C uh, Doesn't really matter, they're still the same um, Okay so let's go and hook up our devices Hook up our drive to our computer And I'll be back with you when I have my computer opened up Alright guys, I've got the computer hooked up now. So first of all, if you're using a USB Pro, uh, then hook up your mini USB port to the USB Pro, and then your SATA connection uh, also hooks up to the USB Pro, like that. Uh, if you're not using USB Pro, then run the SATA cable directly into a port on your computer and that should work. As for the CK3, that's Molex, so you're going to have to find a spare Molex connector in your computer. Yes, I know I have no cable management at all in this PC, but that's just how it goes. So, that's our Molex hooked up. Make sure it's not on like that. You want it switched off right now. And um, now if the drive itself, basically here's the DVD drive and you're going to want to undo the screws to there, to there, undo those screws and then pull it open. Uh, oh there should also be a warranty sticker here, you're going to have to rip or try and use a hair dryer to remove it carefully. Um, I don't bother with that, this is, I've had this drive for years now so to hell with that basically. So, once you get the drive open, you're going to want to turn it upside down and remove the back plate as well. 
because you're going to need access to this PCB. So I'm just going to put that down a bit so that you guys can see. So what we've got to do here is get this cable hooked up. So the point that has the button on it here, this point here goes into the drive. The normal standard one goes into the CK3i. So you just get that hooked up. So now we're going to hook up the CK3i to the drive. And now the SATA port from your USB Pro or from their computer uh, will now go into the SATA port on the DVD drive. And that is you officially got that all hooked up and ready um, for flashing pretty much. Although another step we have to take on the DG2 2S, DG16D2S, it's to hook up the CK3 probe. So Let's do that just now. So, got the little probe here, and as you can probably see right now, there's no power light. That's because we don't have the power switched on on the CK3 Pro uh, or CK3i, and you're going to turn the power on the CK3i now. You should see a little green light on the probe, and if you're using the USB Pro, it will flash, it'll give you a few flashes of blue and then be solid green on both ends. So, and that is us now set up and ready for extracting the DVD key. So I'll now take you over to the computer and show you what you have to do on the software side of things. Okay guys, now we're over onto the computer. What we're going to want to do is download the latest iXtreme and stock firmware from this website. Link will be in the description. Also, the drivers for the CK3i and USB Pro will also be linked in the description if you need to install them. Uh, I'm not going to be showing you how to install them in this tutorial, but uh, if you don't know how, then please watch uh, the BenQ flashing tutorial for I demonstrate how to install the drivers on that one as well. So um, check that out if you are unsure. So what we're going to do is um, also download Jungle Flasher. Um, I'll put a link to this in the description also. Okay guys, so what you want to do is run Jungle Flasher. Uh, run it as administrator just to be safe, or if you have UAC enabled, you can just run it normally. Um, it's not necessary I don't think but um, just do it just in case uh, it's always better to run programs as administrator if you don't have UAC disabled so we're gonna head over to DVD key 32 and you should see it's if you're using the x360 USB Pro uh, this box should be ticked if not make sure it is ticked it will only give you one IO port and it should detect your drive automatically if not click uh, the refresh button here and it should say drive is light on uh, if you're not using an X360 USB Pro, then you should have a bunch of these I.O. ports. Click on each one until it detects your drive, then refresh, make sure it says drive is light on, and you'll be good and ready to extract the DVD key. Uh, you may have multiple COM ports as well. Um, COM port 1 standard should work, um, but you may also have a CK3i COM port as well. Um, I'd recommend you use that one if you have that one showing up. So what we're going to do now is click on FAT key and it should say that it failed but I wouldn't worry about that right now. It should say to resend the command you should click yes, press and hold probe 3 cable button, probe MPX01, then release cable button, press escape to cancel. So this is where you have to use the CK3 Pro and I will put a little picture up on screen right now on the point that you have to probe and then I will swap back over to the camera and show you uh, what you have to do. Now please um, remember that you do not click yes to this message. You do not click on this yes button until you've finished probing MPX01. Then once you have finished that you can then press yes and um, it will extract the DVD key if you did it correctly. I may kind of have both screens up at once, the computer and the uh, me probing the point uh, just to show you so anyway guys I'll move over to the camera now and show you what you have to do from there okay guys so I showed you a picture there of the point that you have to probe 
and bear in mind there's an electrical contact right next to the point you have to probe and if you probe that contact um, it will short out your drive so be very careful if you are nervous and you do not have a steady hand I would recommend covering up that electrical contact with a piece of electrical tape or you know, duct tape or something just to cover it up so you don't accidentally probe it um, if you've never done this before and you think your hands are not steady enough then definitely do that take that extra precaution so what we're going to do here is probe this point and it involves the switch here on the drive I'm not sure if you can see this properly unfortunately but I've got my thumb ready on this uh, point which cuts the power because what we're going to do here I'll just explain it quickly is we probe the point then we hold the power on the DVD drive power cable and what that will do is it will turn the probe off while it's still on the board then hold that down for about two seconds let go power will return to the probe then take the probe off then you click yes on the message on jungle flasher and it should extract the DVD key if everything went successfully so I'm going to show you how to do that just now I know I'm probably in the way of the camera there but probe that point down hold the power one two let go take probe off now click yes on the message now it should say extract complete you should see this up on the computer screen it should say extract complete and now what you want to do is it says to continue you must power off the drive wait five seconds and power it back on again do not use the switch on the cable to do this on the second message you have to use the switch on the CK3i so what we're going to do now is um, we're going to turn it off one two three four five turn it back on click OK on the computer and if everything went successfully it should give you um, it should open a little browser for you to save the um, files back onto. I'm just going to switch my mic over to the correct microphone so you get my audio quality, quality a bit clearer here. Um, so yeah, it'll tell you where you want to save it and we're going to say I want to save it to wherever you want to save it to. So let's just create a new folder on the desktop and grab my keyboard out here. And I'm going to call this new folder. Apologies here. I'm going to rename the call this um, DG dash, I can't do dash, DG16D2S DVD key and I'm going to locate that folder uh, which is right here and I'm going to save it in there and it's going to save the key, the inquiry, the identity or what was it, ident, yeah ident, identify sorry serial and the dummy bin and the dummy bin is the most important one and it should auto load it into the source it'll say do you want to auto load light on plus you want to say no you don't want to auto load light on plus <laughs> so what we're going to do now is open our target firmware so this will be the same firmware that you downloaded this latest i extreme and I've already extracted it uh, to a point on my documents. So we're going to open target firmware. So we're going to open our target firmware. So it's going to, I'm going to have to locate it here. It's in my flash drive files. Um, firmware. And no matter which series of light on drive you have, it will be the 0251 V3.0 that you want uh, in here. So as you can see the firmware, everything on the top should match with everything on the bottom. So the vendor should be the same, model should be the same, rev should be the same. Now, oh, actually, um, if you have a very old light on drive and it's not been updated or it's not been connected to Xbox Live in a long time, the rev may be different to the target firmware. You might have rev 7, 8, 40 something um, or 8 something or 9 something it does not matter they will match so actually with the rev don't worry about that too much if it's different 
um, but the model should be the same, the vendor should be the same, the OSIG should be the same apart from the last four digits, and the firmware type should be different. Firmware type should be fat key extract on the source and it should be uh, LT plus 3.0 on the target. Now you want to click spoof source to target which will copy the DVD keys from the source firmware to the target firmware. Then we're going to head over to MTK Flash and unlike the BenQ where all we had to do was write the firmware, a little bit different again we've got to do an extra step for the light on and um, I have to power my camera back up here so I can show you guys. I'll still keep talking to you on this microphone because it's clear. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my thumb ready on this power switch. So what we're going to do on the computer is we're going to click light on a race. It's going to say, are you 100% sure you have the correct drive key? This command will completely erase your drive. Do you wish to proceed? You want to say yes. It will give you another uh, scary message. Do you wish to proceed? Just confirming say yes so you'll see a first line of dots ignore that then you'll get a second line of dots on the second line of dots you want to turn off your CK3 Pro and turn it back on CK3 I I mean um, turn it off turn it back on done successfully it should say serial flash found with the correct status and once that has happened you can now click on the right button and it will erase and write the modified firmware to the drive and it should say write verified OK okay so once it says write verified OK uh, it's now done but we need to get the drive out of vendor mode so to get it out of vendor mode we have to click the outro slash ATA reset button you may have to click this multiple times for it to actually work uh, but it worked first time for me there but you may have to click it a few times because it may not work but if it does work it'll, it should say drive is light on and if you're using the correct firmware it should also say um, thanks see forever and if, if in case you don't know, see forever is the guy who made the LT plus 3.0 firmware for you guys to play your backup games on. So website seeforeverspeaks.com, very useful for knowing dash updates and stuff when system updates come out to tell if this firmware is safe to be updated uh, to the latest dash. So anyway, that's how you flash a Lighton DG16D2S drive. You can now enjoy your backup games on and your modded ISO discs on your newly flashed DG16D2S drive. Um, that is it basically guys. Uh, please stay tuned for the next episode of Hardware Tutorials which will not be a drive flashing tutorial. Um, the D4S tutorial will be coming soon but I have another tutorial planned for the next episode um, which is not drive flashing related. So Anyway, stay tuned for the next episode of Hardware Tutorials. Please comment if you have any questions. Of course, uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already because I've got some great uh, tutorials, content and stuff on my channel. Um, like the video if you liked it and found it useful. And I will hopefully see you guys in my next video. You're ready to